In this video, I'm going to show you something really interesting. Basically, I'm going to show you how to play a video on scroll. So let me just quickly give you a demo of what I'm talking about. So you can see over here, I have this background and some text on top of this background image. Now when I scroll, you can notice that the background plays as I keep scrolling to the bottom. So this is nothing but a video that's constantly playing the moment I scroll. And this gives a very nice overall effect to the user who's visiting your website. So this is a very popular and cool feature used by many modern websites. And knowing how to build this is really going to upskill your knowledge when it comes to JavaScript animations, transitions, and so on. So again, when I scroll down, you can see the frames keep changing one by one with respect to the scroll position. And if I scroll back up, then it plays the video from the end to the start. All right, so this is a very cool feature. But without any further ado, Let's get building. And also, I'm going to build this using GSAP. Basically, I'm going to use React and GSAP to build something like this. And you're going to see how simple it is to create complex animations using the GSAP library. All right, so first, this is the entire code for the project. It's a very small file, just has 121 lines of code. It's pretty simple. Now, the first thing you need to understand is the way I have done this, the way I have implemented the video playback on scroll is by capturing each frame of the video and storing it in our assets file or basically in our public slash frames file. And then as the user scrolls, I attach each scroll position to each frame present in the frames directory, which is nothing but each frame of the video. And then as the user scrolls, each of those image gets rendered based on the scroll position. So the first thing you have to do is you have to take any video that you want. For example, I have this input.mp4 over here. So first I'll take this video and I'll break it down into different frames. Now you can do that by using FFmpeg. You can download, you can install FFmpeg. So first, if I go over here, and if I search for FFmpeg, so FFmpeg is nothing but a complete cross-platform solution to record, convert, and stream audio and video. So you can download FFmpeg and then use it in the terminal to basically break down your video into different high quality resolution frames. And that is what I have done in my code over here. So this is the command I used. So ffmpeg i input.mp4. So I'm accessing input.mp4 and I'm and I'm saying it to just break it down into different frames, high quality frames, and then put those frames in the public slash frames directory. So public slash frames and it puts and it puts all those frames in this directory. And for each frame it's going to increment its value like this one, two, three, four, and so on. So, uh, so after doing this in total, I get around, I get a total of 456 frames. All right. So remember that I get a total of 456 frames. And that is what this line over here indicates. Total frames equals 456. All right. And don't worry, I will paste this code in the description of this video below. You can go and copy it from there. So now to understand what this entire code base is doing, we'll walk through these lines one by one. But first of all, just know I'm not going to explain you what this div part over here is doing because it's just rendering the code basically here from this div to this div i'm just rendering all those paragraphs in the left and right fashion like these paragraphs and then right over here i just have a canvas defined this canvas is going to contain the entire video on it or basically the individual image frames of the video and i have attached a reference to the canvas itself all right, so this is just the UI part. Now let's focus on the main logic. All right, so this is just the UI part. Now let's focus on the main logic. So of course I have a few imports over here. And for this code to work, you first have to run npm i gsap. This will, that will install the gsap library. And then after that, what we're doing over here is we are bringing in the gsap and its scroll trigger plugin. Now this scroll trigger plugin is what helps us link our scroll position to the frame changes basically to each of these individual frames all right then this is how many frames our video has so you should have these frame images such as frame one frame two and so on like all of these inside a frames folder all right and you can generate all of these by using this ffmpeg command all right then after that i just create a canvas ref which helps us access the canvas dom node which is nothing but this one over here this and then after that, I just create an image state, which is going to be an array where we will store all our preloaded image frames. All right. So first in this use effect, when the, com when the component mounts or when we first refresh the page and land on the page, 
this use effect is going to run and all this entire piece of logic is doing is it's basically creating all of these 456 images so these 456 frames that you see it's it's creating 456 image elements and setting their src to match our frame file names and then after that we store them in the state using set images all right so we are assigning each of these frames to our image src and then we are setting it in the images state which is nothing but an array so now you have an array of all the images then after that we have to draw the frames to the canvas so all of these frames that we have in the images state we need to draw it on the canvas to do that that's what this use effect is doing this is the, this is the primary logic of our entire code so up until here this is pretty general code this part especially the const canvas canvas ref dot current to this part over here so all this is doing is once the images are loaded we get the canvas context right over here we get the canvas context and set its resolution we are, we are scaling it accordingly to the screen's pixel ratio for hd clarity so this is all that does this gives us an hd clarity to match our screen's pixel ratio and then after all this is where the logic comes up where we link our scroll positions to each frame so here basically from here to here all we are doing is we are keeping track of which frame should be shown based on frame state dot frame so images state is an array with all the images and when we use frame state dot frame it's going to capture the exact frame that we are showing on the screen so basically the render function over here clears the canvas and draws the corresponding image every time you scroll so initially when i load the page the frame is zero so we try to access the first image from the images from the images array so frame state dot frame it's zero so images of zero we get the first image we check if the image has been rendered if it's complete if it is then we render that image on the canvas by using something like this all right context or draw image and then we set the width and height of the image as well then we keep doing that every time we scroll so basically the render is being called over here you can see inside the gsap.2 now to understand what gsap.2 does this is nothing but this is the entire magic which helps us link the image to the scroll position on scroll so here this part over here the scroll trigger listens to the scroll and gsap animates the frame value from 0 to 456 or basically in this case 456 minus 1 455 because images is an array and arrays start from zero index so from 0 to 455 is 456 elements right so we are telling gsap using the scroll trigger to listen to the scroll and then animate the frame value from 0 to 456 or basically 0 to 455 all right and then on update on every scroll change which gsap is going to detect using the scroll trigger on every change call the render function so for every change every time a new image is added to the state so for every time we scroll the on update is triggered which calls the render and the render goes ahead and renders the new image to the canvas based on the current frame so if you're still a bit confused regarding where are we incrementing the frame state dot frame then just know that gsap is doing that internally on its own so basically you're saying over here that hey gsap animate the value of frame state dot frame frame state dot frame or this part from 0 to 455 based on how far the user has scrolled so gsap creates an internal tween a tween is nothing but an animation from 0 to 456 and then it updates the frame state dot frame on every scroll on its own and every time it updates it triggers the on update which calls the render every time the frame value changes and the render renders that image for the new frame on the canvas screen all right so that is all what's happening here behind the scenes so you just focus on loading the images and drawing the correct one and gsap will make sure that the changing of the frame image on scroll is handled by the scroll trigger behind the scenes and then this part over here all it says is you draw the first frame immediately on load if you don't write this then when you refresh the page it's going to be a black background at the beginning because there's going to be no image loading at the start all right and this is just some edge case handling so that is pretty much what's going on over here in this piece of code in this entire code and that is exactly what you need to do to be able to create this video playback on scroll which is a very cool feature for modern websites and lastly one more thing if you are wondering what each of these property do you can read this from from the gsap docs as well but if you're wondering what these do it's basically to enhance the user experience so the snap of frame is something that you really need because it rounds the animated value to whole numbers so for example if you scroll gsap is going to give you values like 1.5 2.6 and so on but you want to round it up 
so that we are able to select the exact index from the images array otherwise it's going to give you different frames sometimes which is not going to look right when you scroll down and then this ease of none ensures that when you scroll and you switch between different frames of the video then there's no animation in between them the ease of none ensures there's no animation and it just switches directly similarly the start over here it says that it defines where the scroll based animation begins so top top means that the moment the user starts scrolling let the animation begin and the end over here defines how far you must scroll to reach the last frame so after scrolling down 5000 px the animation will pretty much stop and scrub over here it binds the scroll position directly to the animation progress so without scrub the animation plays automatically when you scroll past the trigger zone now with scrub true gsap ties the animation progress to the scroll progress and because of that you can control the video frame by frame with your scroll wheel which is super smooth all right so that is all for this video i hope you got to learn a lot from these 121 lines of code so if you found this video insightful drop a like and subscribe for more